Hello everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn in Way of Spears and today I'm going to be doing the naughty list, a holiday writing tag by Jenna Moresi. So let's just jump right into it. Now I was actually tagged to do this naughty list by Brie Barton and Brie's debut young adult trilogy, Heart of Thorns, is coming out by HarperCollins in summer 2018. Brie is extremely fun and I really enjoy her videos so I recommend that you check her out if you haven't already. I'm going to link her channel below as well as her version of this tag. Now Jenna Moresi did create this tag and I'm going to link to the original blog post down below so that you can check it out. I did remove some of the questions that I felt did not really apply to my characters or to my novel. So there will only be seven questions in this tag versus the original 10. So if you decide to do this tag, definitely check out Jenna's video and her Tumblr post so that you can see what the 10 original questions were. All right, so there are two rules before we begin. The first rule is that you have to provide a brief kind of summary and description of your novel before you begin, and it can be no more than five sentences. The second rule is that if your cast of characters in your novel is fewer than 15 characters, then you cannot use the same character more than twice. So you can use every character up to two times. And if you have a cast of more than 15 characters, you can only use each character's name one time. All right, so let's just jump right into this. First, I have to start with a little bit of a description of my novel, my work in progress, Song of the Dryad. So Song of the Dryad is a novel about a young woman named Charlotte who wants nothing more than to just graduate high school and be able to focus all of her time and her energy into her music. However, the regular routine of her life is shattered when she discovers that her mother was kidnapped by the Fae. Fairy magic is dying and Charlotte has to restore five powerful stones to an ancient fairy shrine if she ever wants to bring her mom home. The problem is she has no idea where these five stones are and she has no idea how to find them. She'll have to enlist the help of quirky and curious fairy creatures if she ever wants to see her mom again. All right, so that was actually much harder than I thought it would be. It's, it's tough to take a, you know, 115,000 word novel and summarize it in five sentences. And it'll be even more difficult if I have to write like 140 character tweet pitch or something. Uh, but now that that is out of the way, let's go ahead and start on these fun questions. All right, the first question is, which character is so into the holidays that they nearly cause a streetwide power outage from their Christmas lights? I have to say this is probably Grandma Patty. She is Charlotte's grandmother and she loves to be over the top. She's one of those grandmothers that has like bright pink nail polish and she has these really funky like retro glasses and wears bright colors and goes to like yoga for seniors and does all these really fun quirky things. And I can definitely see her putting up like just one more decoration, just one more string of lights and putting up so many lights that it completely causes that power outage, especially because they live in a small mountain town. So there's probably not as much power there as you would find like in the middle of a busy city. So I can definitely see Grandma Patty doing that. The second question is, which character is more than happy to steal Hanukkah gelt from poor unsuspecting children? And Hanukkah gelt equals chocolate coins. I'm glad that Jenna added that because I didn't know what Hanukkah gelt was. So I would definitely have to say that it's going to be one of the fairy creatures and his name is Puka. Puka is definitely a trickster. He is kind of like a goblin king and he steals, he steals in the novel just in general. So I can definitely see him frightening children and then stealing all of their chocolate coins. That's something he would have no shame in doing. <laughs> Question number three. One of your characters decides to pregame before church and passes out in the middle of Christmas service. Which character is it? I would have to say that it would be Freddy. Freddy is an extremely playful character and she loves to just relax and have a good time. 
And I can, I can imagine that she does this pretty often. And her girlfriend Aspen probably always has to like carry her home and put her to bed and then take care of her the next day when she's sick. So I definitely say that it's probably Freddie because she would just want to kind of spice things up and have a good time. All right, question number four. Which character hasn't been seen since winter began because they refuse to deal with the snow? I'm going to have to say that this is another fairy character. This is going to be the brownie. He's kind of a uh, grumpy type character and he definitely loves the warmer weather. Uh, he can usually be found working in the gardens and working in the flower beds and taking care of all of the plants. So during the winter when there's none of that going on and it's just wet and cold and kind of miserable outside, I can see him just like hiding away in his brownie hole and not poking his head out until the warm weather is back. So I would definitely say the brownie. Question number five, which character completely forgot about the holidays and ends up re-gifting to everyone? Now there aren't any like human characters in my novel that would do this because I feel like most of them are pretty festive and they wouldn't just forget the holidays. So I'm going to have to kind of cheat a little bit and say that it's going to be the brownie again. He is definitely a grumpy type character. He doesn't really want anything to do with the holidays. So he would probably either forget the holidays or completely ignore them and then he wouldn't, he wouldn't gift to anybody, I don't think. And if, if he was like forced to give gifts, he would probably give like mud pies or weeds from the garden or something because for the most part, he doesn't like humans very much and he would probably want to give them gag gifts if he had to gift somebody. <laughs> Question number six, which character has such crappy luck? They only discover their potato allergy after picking out on lot case. I'd probably say that this has to be William, who is Charlotte's father. And it's not that he necessarily has bad luck, but when he's having a good time, he can just be a little bit um, kind of flighty and easily distracted. Like he just gets so wrapped up in having a good time and socializing with people that he doesn't remember that he needs to stay away from potato things. So I can definitely see him like having a few glasses of wine and just totally picking out on everything on the buffet table and then really regretting it afterwards. So I'd have to say William. <laughs> All right, now question seven, which will be the final question for me because there were three questions that I skipped out on. And this question is, one of your characters should be on the naughty list, but has convinced Santa to clear their name. Which character is it and what was their means of persuasion? I would say this is probably the Dryad. She is a very powerful and persuasive character. And I'd say that because she is a tree nymph and she has nature magic, she would probably threaten Santa and tell him that she's going to like suck the life out of all the Christmas trees and kill all of the Christmas trees unless he took her off of the naughty list. And I'm pretty sure that Santa would abide with her request because of course Santa doesn't want to see all of the festive Christmas trees just like gray and brown and you know curling in on themselves and dying because she sucked all the life out of them. So I think that would be a really wonderful way for the Dryad to persuade Santa to take her off of the naughty list. Okay, that was the naughty list, a holiday writing tag. Those were my seven questions that I selected out of the original 10. Now remember I was tagged by Brie Barton, so I'm also going to be including all of her information down below. And now it's time for me to tag three lovely individuals. So first up, I'm going to tag Jesse Elliott. I'm going to tag Brooke at By the Brook, and then I'm going to tag Trinda Adair. So you three are tagged, and then anybody else that sees this and would like to do the tag, please do. And then remember to kind of give me a shout out and let me know that you shared this video so that I can come and give it a watch. Thank you everybody so much for watching this Naughty List tag today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!